to break even. When you buy a new condo, will it break even? Will the rent that you're expecting to collect will be enough to cover all your expenses? This is what we're going to look at today. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor Mortgage Broker, Research Realty Search Mortgage, Ontario's absolutely best brokerage firm. I absolutely love it. Thank you very much for letting me work there. And today we're going to look at can we break even on condos. We're going to actually run through the numbers. I want to show you how to do the numbers and what's happening. A uh, quick introduction. My name is Yossi Kaplan. I work at Search Realty, Search Mortgage, and I sell condos and I get your mortgages and pre-approval letters. So if you want to buy a condo, sell a condo, invest in a condo, if you're curious of how much a condo is worth, whether you already have it or you bought it but it's not ready yet or you want to assign it, how much it's worth, how long it's going to take me to sell, all these things, just give me a call. I'll do I'll do it for you. YossiKaplan.com, one of my sites where I focus on pre-construction and assignments. Uh, for example, here there's some in-depth articles, which is better assi uh, which is better as investment, assignment, or pre-construction. So there's the video and this is some text, some explanation. If you're new to the game or reviewing, uh, take a look at these videos. I'm putting as much information as I can. A lot of people call me and say, oh, you know, Yossi, I don't want to take your time. No, take my time, please. That's my job. My job is to sell your condo and your job's to buy from me, okay? So today I'm gonna look at uh, Nordic condos. I made the video uh, yesterday. You can see it right here at uh, Urban Realty Toronto. Okay, it's a detailed video showing you everything you need to know about uh, Nordic condos. I really like this project. I think that uh, the location, the offering, um, the floor plans are very, very good and the price actually makes sense. So today I'm gonna use it as an example to show you what I mean, okay? Um, so if you go to uh, urbanrealtytoronto.com, to the Nordic condo, you get all these beautiful renders. You can see exactly what the project is. You can view the video that I put yesterday. Uh, there's some diagrams. I really like this stuff, you know. I'm, uh, I'm a son of an engineer, so for me, that's great. Uh, site plans, I grew up on these things. Where the area is, uh, all your links, and of course, all the floor plans are here, okay? Uh, I don't post prices and floor plans, that's a worksheet. Uh, sorry, I don't post prices, floor plans, yes, because prices do change. As you know, the platinum sale for Nordic right now uh, will give you the absolute best price possible. That's Nordic, okay, I'm just going to show you my channel. Um, then the VIP sale will start next week, and after that it'll be the public sale. So as more condo units are bought, the price keeps creeping up, okay? So the difference between the very first condo you sold from developer to the investors that the last one sold could be very, very significant. And that's why people buy in our VIP for construction. Now the problem is of course that the window of opportunity is closing. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, the window of opportunity is closing because prices are going so up. So it's just crazy. So I'm gonna review this, gonna go into this uh, worksheet in just a second. Uh, YorkVillaxuryRealEstate.com, that's where we come in. ANX Condos, I'm going to upload this. I'm about halfway through the article. ANX is uh, really, really beautiful by Free Developments. We'll look at that. Uh, but first, let's get to Nordic Condos. So how to tell if this condo will break even. So here's what we're going to do, okay? What I've done is, um, if you go here, so I'll show you how to do it. Go to UrbanRealtyToronto.com. Uh, right now is the first article. If you look at this video in a bit, maybe it's not be the first. You can either search here in Nordic. Okay, Black Friday, Nordic, and that should work, there you go, okay, so then the article comes on the featured condos, so there you go, you can get the floor plans, everything you want, and let's focus on the floor plan, now, I want to see how much can I squeeze out of that investment, because at the end of the day, my job, my friends, is to sell you good investments, now, I can sell you anything, I can sell you the that you know, so will return negative ROI, but my interest is to help you preserve your wealth and increase your wealth and allow you to get this wealth to the next generation. So a lot of people that call me are young people, like that's my first or second or third condo. Uh, I, I made some money or the family is helping me in, but the other uh, type of people that call me are families. We're in our 50s, we're in our 60s, we're in our 70s. We want to build a bit of our condo portfolio that we can use for retirement or the rental income or maybe we can sell it later uh, or we want to just uh, use it as inheritance and pass it on to fu future generations that is perfect this I'm, I'm all for that that kind of fits my, my values my family values and my life values so I'm happy to work on this with you 
Uh, so which which unit should we pick? Which unit should we pick? Well, I'm going to pick because Nordic, if you watched the video yesterday, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing, but uh, I think the... Oh, put my back. The, <laughs> the, the main point here is that we want to find the highest efficiency unit. And, and to me, the highest efficiency unit, I'm going to cut to the chase. You can see here... Um, at the bottom, it shows you the sitemap, how many of these units exist. And this developer and the architect are very, very smart. I really like what they've done here. You know, I don't work for them. I don't even know them. I'm just giving you information as, as optimal as I can, as objective as I can. Uh, given all, I think we've been used to invest in downtown so much, but now the prices in downtown are so crazy, we have to look at alternatives. So Nordic is coming at reasonable prices. Uh, here we go. Uh, this platinum, so it will go up, of course, but this week you can get these prices. Uh, all you got to do is uh, give me a call or email, and I'll send the entire package worksheet, help you uh, secure a unit. But we're going to look at these two bedroom, 557 square feet to 684, starting from 550, $550,000. Why this one? Because in my opinion, that is the most efficient unit, okay? So you can see there's um, this is a small two bedroom here, E1A. Uh, it's okay, it's a bit of an inside corner, so you probably come at a bit of a discount. Um, this one here, the two-bedroom E1-D is 562 square feet. I'm going to open a new tab so you can see, like, now this is a JPEG. I can uh, scroll here and get you the, uh, the full res. So there she is, right there. Uh, Nordic condos, two-bedroom E1-D, into your living area, 562 square feet. Small balcony, I wish it was larger, you know, but that's what I got. Total living area, I don't consider myself living area as the balcony. It's, it's a nice thing to say, but I'm in Canada. I live in my unit or I'm outdoor, okay? At the balcony, that's so small, it's good for, it's like a smoking balcony. Go have your smoke, come back. But this is, you can see this unit appears on a lot of, on a lot of floors and in many, many variations here which is really, really good. It's north-facing, it's south-facing, it's uh, east-facing, it's west-facing. It's basically a, a perfect rental because uh, one bedroom at this size, 560 square feet, you know, is going to only get you one rent. Um, but two bedrooms, you know, you can split the rent between uh, roommates, partners, uh, young family, and because the bedrooms are split, you can have uh, two roommates, each living in a room, a brother and a sister, two students, a uh, family with a child. It's all good. Uh, one person and then the other bedroom, they can rent it out or they can use it as a computer room. I really like it. It's a very good design. It's highly, highly efficient. And kudos to the architect. Finally, they put in the kitchens at the back. You know, these long, narrow units with the kitchens reaching all the way to the glass at the front are not good because they don't have enough room. Sit, but this is fine. It is a small unit, of course, 562 square feet. It's very, very tight, but that's what you're looking for in the modern era. That is a very, very good plan, my friends. And if, you, if you've been following uh, Plaza and Urban Corp, although one of them don't exist anymore, uh, they've been using these plans quite a bit and very, very successful. Once we get to the larger unit, you're going to find your RI starts to drop because the rent stays the same for two bedroom, but the cost are more <clears throat> so it's not necessarily bad to have a larger unit because there's a lot of especially for long term or anything like this which you know gets a corner with lots of light or anything like this or or even a three bedrooms which i think i haven't done the numbers on the three bedrooms but i'm pretty sure they'll do really well maybe better than the two bedrooms and there's a couple of them here three bedroom three bedroom Three bedroom, look at this, this is good design, okay, three bedroom. But I'm gonna go back to the E1Ds, keep it simple for today, and I'm gonna dive right into it. I'm gonna show you how to calculate, and we'll find out uh, if this unit is a good buy, and if it is, like how much money can you make of it, okay? So the E1D, uh, 562 square feet, 37 balcony, uh, I don't really care for this, okay? I care for this here, 562 square feet. So um, this is called the Kaplan Condo Calculator version one. <laughs> Uh, I will make this available. I'll split it uh, and make this available uh, to anyone that wants. I'll, I'll do it on Google Docs or Dropbox or whatever. Um, so this is a very simple thing. So I'm just going to go 
through this with you and we're gonna do the exercise obviously these are not gonna be exact numbers or absolute numbers the developer has not asked me to do this this is all on my own <clears throat> so big disclaimer here this is on my own this is for education entertainment purposes don't go buy a unit based on this do your own numbers da -da 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 -da. okay I think you all smart investors you get that okay so the name is Nordic Condos the unit is two bedroom E1 uh, dash D this unit here this is your let's get rid of it okay so that's the unit sell balcony 37 I'm gonna say there's no parking for the calculation parking is a whole other thing or locker um, I'm not sure where the caps are there probably will be caps and I'm not buying any extras okay so for now I'll just assume the caps are 15,000 and I'm gonna buy no extras okay so what is the price of the unit uh, the price of the unit now it depending which unit you'll get obviously the low floor north facing unit are deemed a little less uh, valuable so they have a lower price but hey those will make higher ROI and you on a high floor facing uh, south towards Wilson or maybe even west get some nice views and Sun on a high floor that could be really really cool okay level 12 it's only north and south level 10 level 9 level 6 level 5 here there's two of them here level 3 there's two of them here level 4 there's two of them here these are the two buildings right so that looking over the other buildings. so these two here and those two here will have more of an open view level 1 level 2 okay level 1 probably uh, ground level maybe they have a bit of a patio too so we'll just take, we'll just take, uh, I'm just going to scroll back up here and we'll just use like a general price just to give us an idea. So here it says the two bedroom starts as 557 to 684, 550 square feet and two plus then at 600 square feet, it's about a thousand, just under a thousand. So welcome feet. to the Cap and Condo Calculator version 1.0 and here we're going to put all the information about the unit that we have. Now, remi remind you, this is an imaginary unit. It's not necessarily exactly the same. I'm not going to calculate today um, anything outside of the actual price, such as closing costs, taxes, land transfer. Um, those will leave for another. There's enough information I want to transfer to you right now today. And if you need help with any of these things, please give me a call, email me, whatever. That's my job. You know, people call and say, yo, see, like, I don't know, you're too busy. No, I'm not too busy. That's my job. My job is to sell condos to investors. My job is to help me to sell your condo or buy one or many. So give me a call. All right. So here's Nordic Condos. Um, I will be sharing this uh, with you. Okay. So this is the Nordic Condos and I chose the unit uh, two bedroom E1D um, because I think it's a very efficient unit that will, that will give a good ROI on rents. Okay. Um, all, all the all the floor plans are here. You can also go to the Nordic Condo uh, page that I put on Urban Realty Toronto, um, and you can just scroll down to the floor plans, uh, which are here. And this is the one, uh, two bedroom E one dash D. If you want a nice PDF of it, I have it. Just uh, email me, and I'll flip you the PDF. So there's the E one A, which is very similar, probably a little cheaper, uh, because it's an inside corner. And then that two bedroom E1D is the one that I like because it's a near perfect two bedroom. Okay, the kitchen is tucked at the back just like I like it. It leaves a bit of room for the living room. It's got a master with an ensuite. It's got a little bath here which a second bedroom could use or the guest. Uh, each room has a little closet. It's a tiny unit, it's 562 square feet. So, you know, that used to be the size of studios, and then that became a size of one bedroom, and then one plus ten, now it's a two bedroom. But that's a very, very efficient design. I would love the balcony to be larger. I'm not sure why they put such small balconies. But otherwise, uh, it's very, very good. And the ROI for the unit is good because uh, it packs two bedroom into a small space. So let's run some numbers. I'm gonna make it very, very easy and simple. So if it's the first time you do anything like this, or look at anything like this, uh, I'm going to make it as easy as possible to follow and it's just going to make it real easy. So you can do it yourself or you can ask me to do it for you. So here's my spreadsheet, Kaplan Condo, Calculator version 1, or the Condo, 2 bedroom, 
uh, it's a condo exposure I don't really care square feet okay so the square feet for this unit uh, you see it right here is 562 always use the inside because people don't live on the balcony the total living area is 562 my friends I don't buy this okay uh, it's 562 there you go balcony I don't really care uh, parking is zero locker is zero I'm not gonna buy them don't know where the caps are and I'll buy any extras okay so it's a little loud here from the coffee maker but it's okay so what would be the price for this unit so when you look at um, when you look at the uh, second page here of the offering oh, uh, you can see that the two bedroom 557 square feet starts at 550 okay so that's just under a thousand a foot uh, so what I'll do is I'll use uh, I'm gonna use uh, say 580 okay and what's that per fee? That's very easy. Take the price and divide it by a square feet you have, and that's 1032. Now, if I want to bring this number down, I'm just going to use a lower number here. For example, if I use 562000, obviously it's going to be 1000. And if I pay less, 550, that's 979. But we'll use 580 just to be a little large. Uh, I may be over conservative here, but that's always better. Okay? And the deposit card, of course, is 20%, so 0 0.20, uh, which is uh, 0 0.20 times 580, the purchase price. That's 116,000. How is the deposit required? Uh, it says right here, uh, standard deposit structure, 5,000 with offer, balance to 5% in 30 days. Second 5%, so that's 5% altogether. I'm just going to use it as 5%. Uh, 5% in 90, 5% in a year, and then 5% a year and a half. So total 4 times 5%, 20%, and there's nothing on occupancy or or when you uh, close, which is which is good in my opinion. So developers is making sure that they collect all the 20% up front. That's very, very smart. That's a smart developer. Okay, so what would be deposit? So I have here, um, let me bring this up here. I'm just going to make it visible. So the original price, um, that was 580 in this case, and each of these deposits uh, will be, let's make them 5%, okay? So there they are. You can convert this to percent if you like, okay? Convert this to percent if you like, it doesn't matter, it's the same. So the original price, um, I'm just gonna make sure it's all visible. Great. So the original price was 580. We did that, and the deposit will be 5% times the original price, the the purchase price. This is the same. I'll just do it to make it clear. So 29,000. That's one payment of 5%. Remember, the first payment will be 5,000, and then let's make this visible. So the first payment is 5,000 and the second one will be 5% less than five. So this minus that. And again, if you need some help, I can do this for you. It won't take me long. Just give me a call, say hi, send me your file and I'll, I'll, I'll send you back a spreadsheet. No big deal. Okay, um, our reason, so that's the first and that's the uh, first, uh, call it first A, first, uh, first, first, add on first remain okay so why I do this because if I change the price here to six hundred thousand all these numbers that stays five thousand but that will change okay and so that's a dynamic uh, sheet and again here I can just copy it the only thing I need to freeze the C19 uh, I did learn a lot of the stuff in business school and from my colleagues and other peer students and the rest myself so there you go so you're looking at uh and then an occupancy there's nothing in this in this uh case so my total deposit is summary of everything above here oh. there you go 116,000, which is good because that is indeed the 20% that we saw here. So that's the same. Just I calculated 20% here and here I just summarize. It's the same. Okay. 
So first of all, you know that to buy this condo, you need to come up with four chunks of 29,000. The first one is the first 30 days. The second is the, uh, it says right here, in the 90, and then one year, and then a year and a half, okay? So there we go. So 116,000 total. Now, you can buy this with a friend. I'm gonna speed up a bit. You can buy this with a friend, uh, which is could be a really good if you know you're short, you have only half of the deposit, and your friend, both you and your friend, can, can uh, pre approve for the mortgage. And by the way, thank you, all the 270 subscribers. I'm honored to serve you and to share information with you. Please like and subscribe uh, to my channel. It really helps. All the comments at the bottom really helps. Uh, how to buy condo with a partner. There's a video that talks about it. Somewhere down here. How to buy real estate with a partner. You see? This one here. Go here. Okay, so back to my spreadsheet, total deposits. So that's it. Now I pay the developer and I basically wait the four or five years, uh, maybe four, maybe three, say four in this case. So what's gonna happen in this four years? Well, the first thing's gonna happen is usually prices tend to go up, okay? Prices tend to go up because we have an inflationary economy. So we're building that equity that is rising. Now, I'm not gonna collate that today in your ROI, uh, but I will tell you that we expect the price to rise, right? We expect it to rise 3%, 5%, 8%, 10%. 10%. Uh, Condos.ca will give you great numbers about that. Uh, this is some rendering of this beautiful project. Notice it's a whole bunch of chunks. So depending where you are on in the chunk, um, that's what the view you'll get. So a lot of these units will look into another building, but some of them, will have open views. Uh, north could be pretty cool here, actually. Also, the west could be pretty cool. Uh, the east on this corner could be really nice. And uh, the south, if you can find a unit, would be really good. Now, usually the units with the least amount of view and sunlight will be the cheapest. Um, and the units at higher flow with more view and sunlight will be more expensive. Which one should you buy? Well, if you're looking for a long-term investment and to have the tenant stay there for a long time, Definitely invest a little more because it's you know you're only paying 20% of it anyways. 80% is from the bank, so it's not that big of a deal, um, and your return will be slightly lower. But it, overall, you're probably going to be able to recapture that later. So in the long term, I always look for quality uh, more than the actual numbers. Uh, west here could be really cool over the park. Okay, it's all good. I like it very much. Okay, so. I'm paying 580 for this condo and I'm putting 116,000 in deposits, four times 29,000. Okay, now how much mortgage do I have to pay? So let me show you something. What's my mortgage amount? Okay, so the mortgage amount uh, it's 80% of the purchase price. So this will be 80% time. The purchase price 580. It doesn't matter which one of these 580s I hit because that one is this one. There you go, 464. And if you want to convert it to percentage, just go like this. Okay, so 464. So, how much total purchase price here? Uh, I don't really need it because I have it here. The total purchase price um, now, what would be my month? How much would the mortgage be per month? And what would be my total expenses? So, I'll show you right here. Okay. So the monthly expenses for this condo is really what I'm interested in because that will tell me if I can break even or not. The uh, topic is, can we break even? So all these things, at the end, we're going to get a response. Will we break even or not? Is it a good buy or not? That's a whole. That's the whole purpose of this exercise. Okay. So maintenance fees, municipal tax, mortgage. Since I'm on the mortgage, let's look at the mortgage first. Okay. Now, sometimes I'll calculate the mortgage within the sheet itself, but for this we're just going to make it easier so I'm going to take the mortgage amount of 464 uh, control or command C that if you're on the Mac go to the TD mortgage calculator or any mortgage calculator you like I'll input I'll input that uh, in the sheet the formula but for now I'm just going to use it just plain just to show you so you can follow along and then add my own rate and I'm going slow today just so you can uh, follow with me uh, it doesn't really matter which one you pick here because I'm entering my own rate anyways. And I'm gonna use 3% at 25% amortization for two days. Now that's that's reasonable. Okay, do you plan to make any lump sum payments? No. 
protect myself in my home with TD credit protection? No, that's going to add to my cost. I can do it later. Maybe I have an insurance like that. Maybe I don't care for this insurance. I just want to get the pure numbers, um, net, net, net kind of thing. So calculate my payments. It comes at $21.95.86 monthly for the amount of four six four, one year closed. But I'll show you, even if I put six years closed, those numbers uh, don't change. What changes here is your interest paid throughout, of course. But I'm just looking at this number here. That stays, okay? So at 464, I'm paying basically 2200. So let's put 2200 here. So my mortgage, monthly expense is 2200, 2200. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that's fine. Now let's look what are my condo fees or monthly fees, uh, maintenance fees, okay? So you'll hear the word maintenance fees, condo fees. That is how much I have to pay to the condo board to maintain the condo for me. So uh, the grounds, the elevators, the security, the garbage, all that stuff. There's basically a whole team that sits there and helps you do these things, okay? So you can go here and it says maintenance fees, 50 cents, zero, 50 cents uh, a foot or 0 0.56 of a dollar per square foot, hydro, water, heating, and cooling, individually meter. Okay, what does that mean? That means that your fixed cost to run the unit uh, is 56 cents times whatever square feet you have. Now, that's a bit of a low estimate for this calculation. I'm going to use a bit of a higher number just to account for inflation and anything else. Uh, all the other bills are billed to the tenant. Hydro is a hydro bill for your electric. Okay, if you're not from Canada, I was very confused when I came to Canada. What the hell is hydro? Hydro is an electric bill. Water, what comes out of your tap, the, all the condos, even not that old, they include it in condo fees. So that's another bill to the tenant. Uh, heating and cooling, uh, I don't know of a bill that separate heating and cooling because those run off your hydro. Uh, but maybe there's some here I don't know. Maybe there's a, a geothermal uh, or HVAC rental. Maybe you can buy it. Uh, we'll find that for you. But for now, all these are built to the tenant, okay? So obviously, the amount of rent you're going to charge is going to be plus. The ten plus. But for now, we're going to look at here, 0.56. And I'm going to add a little bit. I'm going to make it slightly higher. Um, I'll make it uh, 0.65 of a dollar, which means 65. I'm going to use 65 cents a foot. 65, okay? Slightly higher. Because uh, I'm conservative, and I think, well, you know, maybe price will go up. So 65. So how much that total? It's going to be 0.65, which is 65 cents per square feet, per square foot. And I have 562 square feet up here. Uh, so the number would be 365 a month for your maintenance fees. That's reasonable, okay? Could be 400. That's reasonable. Let's say 365. That's fine. And the tax I have to pay the city, that's another fixed cost because, you know, you got to pay the city that amount... And the municipal tax would be uh, about 1% of the purchase price. That could be a little less, but again, I'm conservative, we'll use 1%. Um, so that will be 0.01% of the purchase price, but that's, that's annualized. The purchase price is here. So that's... Oh, what did I do here? I put it in the wrong... Uh, again. Uh, times this... Okay, and now I'm going to make it visible, so it's just remove it, two zeros, and then this number needs to be divided by 12 to find out how much would it be per month. So I divide it by 12, and again, I'll make this worksheet available for you, and uh, if you need some help with it, please call me. My job is to sell your condo, so people call me and say, oh, Yossi, I know you're really busy. No, I'm not too busy to sell your condo, and that's what I do. That's my job, so call me. So the Maintenance fees are about 365 a month. The municipal tax look a little high to me, but I'll just keep it the way it is. So what's the total here? Okay, what's the total? Um, I had some stuff here. I'm just going to remove all that stuff. Okay, so the total monthly, uh, the fixed cost, total fixed. Okay, the total fixed would be this plus that. So per month... 848 so I need 848 850 dollars a month to carry this unit if you would pay for cash uh, without any bills or extras just just pure net 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 okay and there's another interesting calculation you can take this amount and divide by amount of square feet and know what your fixed cost per square foot 
that's a buck fifty, buck fifty one. Okay, so a buck fifty a foot. Now that's a little high. I, I think it'll be a little. I my guess is it'll be a little lower, but once again, let's be let's be very very conservative here. Okay, and the mortgage uh, we're gonna add it here twenty two hundred. Okay, so twenty two hundred dollarize that so what does that give me here that gives me a total monthly how much do I pay total as a landlord 30 49 30 50 it makes sense so about three thousand dollars a month for this unit so this is the amount of rent I need to get to break even net 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 without uh, any additional expenses the unit is rented um, <clears throat> I'm not calculating anything anything beside that just just net 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 okay everything else is extra uh, and again, this will vary depending on what you buy, where you buy, all that stuff. So take this with a grain of salt. Big disclaimer here. Uh, this is all with a grain of salt. Do your own due diligence. Do your own numbers. This is for education, entertainment, edutainment only. So can you get 3000 a month for this unit? Can you break even? Will your unit break even? That's the whole purpose of this calculation. Well, to me, I think it will. And i tell you why. Uh, you won't be able to get a brand new today one bedroom condo at this kind of a gorgeous building with all these features and amenities and location and brand new and um, everything it offers including the parquet and the dark pee area and the location and everything for less probably more probably be 1800 now for one bedroom there and if it's new i can see 2000 no problem i mean you can't even get a studio for 2000 downtown anymore so 3000 for this two bedroom, although it's small, I think it's reasonable. And if you get uh, two York University students here, or a young teacher, or support staff, or anyone that has to do with the university, there's about 50,000 students in York and probably about 20,000 um, support staff, you know, 70,000 of you, that's just York, there's a lot more. If you go back to the video from yesterday about uh, Nordic, um, he talks more about the location and what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to stick the numbers here. So, this unit here, and there's quite a few of them, there's a reason why in balcony level 2 to 12. So, there's a reason why, and if you can buy a unit with a bit of a better view, on a higher floor, yes, your PSF will be higher because your purchase will be higher and your total number will be higher, but remember your fixed cost uh, the condo fees are the same if you buy this unit at the lowest floor with absolute zero view or you buy on the penthouse view floor with the best view the condo fees are the same so that works in your favor if you buy a better view unit even if it's more expensive uh, taxes will be you know it's one percent difference on a difference but it's not that much um, probably you know you'll pay a few more bucks a month in taxes to be on a higher floor and the rest is in the mortgage Okay, so if this unit was a $600,000 unit, $599. So you're looking at $1066 a foot, your deposits are almost $120, and it goes by $950 more each deposit. Okay, so everything updated itself. Um, I do need to update the mortgage. Now the mortgage amount is $4792, now it was $464. Okay, so it's not a lot, it's about $13,000, $14,000 more. So how much would it cost me more in mortgage? Just plug that in here. 2268, 2268, I'm rounding. So 22, so $68 more uh, per month for the higher floor. So now I'm gonna need to reach 3132. So can you charge uh, 1616 uh, half per room? Probably could, 1616 the room is still not bad. And that's to break even. It does not include your appreciation of value. So how will this condo break even? Yes, this condo break even. Now, what's your monthly income here? So you're going to need the monthly income. Okay, you're going to need a monthly income equal or greater to this number in order to break even. And of course, then we're going to look at your monthly profit, your monthly cash flow, annual cash flow, annual ROI. I'll do this in another video. I'll expand on this because I think there's so much information here. And again, I hope I don't overwhelm here, but more help you to understand how to really make sure that what you buy is break even. Because I see so many people buying so, such expensive condos, and we do the, they call me, I do it on the phone with them, or, or we do it in person. Some people come and meet me, some people call me, some people email me, it's all good. Um, the idea is to share information with the investors, with the buyers and the sellers, 
And if you like what I do, you use my services. That's that's what I'm here to do, right? But the first thing and foremost is to share this information. You know, there's real estate agents looking at these videos, there's lawyers looking at these videos. I'm getting amazing comments. I really appreciate each and every subscriber. And please do like and comment on this video because it puts them back into the circulation of all videos on YouTube. And it really helps uh, for others to discover them when you subscribe, like, and comment. So I really, really appreciate that. You can also follow on uh, Twitter here. Uh, sometimes, you know, like, this came out of my phone. Um, I just saw it and I just added it to Twitter. So there's no article here. So a lot of the stuff on Twitter, you won't find other places, um, videos that I like, not just real estate, also about business, economy, you know, anything to do like with the topic. Okay, most popular website. That's just cool business stuff. So sometimes I'll add some of these. Okay, so I'm going to summarize here because it's pretty long and I hope I haven't... Uh, talk too much about this topic but I will make many more videos about this stuff because it's very, very important for people to understand the math and today we start with the simplest math now friends this is not complicated I was very very bad quote unquote in math when I was a kid because the teacher was like it wasn't these days you know they just tell you like in front of all the other kids all the terrible stuff about you and that's how I used to be uh, and that's fine that told me they used to beat them with a the ruler <laughs> So maybe off topic here, but don't be afraid of the numbers, you know, um, there's always a solution, there's always help available, and it uh, doesn't matter what, we live in great times, great time to invest, Toronto is the best city in the world, my friends, I love it, uh, it's growing leaps and bounds, not without its growing pains, but you can see that you can make money in Toronto, so if you can buy this condo, and really your investment is $120,000 plus closing costs, if you buy a small enough unit, a good enough unit, good floor plan enough unit, you can at least break even, which is very comforting. And then, and then, <clears throat> on that base, it'll be easy for you to rent it because you know what you need to get. It's right here to get about three grand for it. Now, if I bought this unit for um, five fifty, my mortgage amount is four forty, and now I'm dropping in twenty eighty two, so I'm saving some money here. And now I drop below the 3,000 mark, okay? So to get to the, so around, uh, say, 565, I will automate everything for you here, and the mortgage amount is 452, uh, 2139, 2139, so there you go. So I want to get towards the $3,000 a month mark on this small two-bedroom. That's, to me, a very good uh, equilibrium, okay? That, that's kind of a point I can wrap my head around. Now, frankly, if it's a hundred bucks more or less in the long term, it doesn't matter. Even if I have to add a hundred bucks out of my pocket, or I need to increase my deposit in order to reduce the mortgage, that's okay too, because I'm grabbing an asset that I wouldn't be able to grab otherwise. Really, really important. Okay. Um, think about it this way: if the price of this condo increased, let's say ten percent. Okay. Let's say I bought it for five seventy. So my total deposit is 114, uh, original price 570, 2850, uh, 2500 for payments, and the mortgage is 456. So I take this 456 here, plug it here. So now I'm at 2158 mortgage. Remember, these are fixed 2158. So just increase the payments by 20 bucks. So there you go. So at 570, this imaginary condo with condo fees of 65 cents a foot, that's higher one the developer said, and slightly higher municipal tax, I'm still breaking even. If I were to use uh, 0.56 here, then I drop, I save 50 bucks a month, okay? If I were to use uh, even uh, just slightly less, so I drop here, and then I drop, and I drop, and I drop, and here I just saved $76 a month. So you see, these are pretty fluid things. Um, I'll just keep them for here, just to just to maintain the equilibrium of three thousand a month, fifteen hundred dollars a room, a bedroom. Very very good value, in my opinion. Um, I do believe that these two numbers here will be lower. We don't know about this one, but three percent I think is pretty safe. Not taking any crazy amounts here, and we are using the full eighty percent um, to mortgage. Now, if you were to use higher dollar to mortgage, if you were to put more deposit down, say 30% or 35, let's say you're a foreign buyer or acting as a foreign buyer, you're dropping $200,000, uh, what happens is the mortgage amount 
uh, is dropping. Now here I need to update here of course, so I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna make it auto automate here. Okay, so now this dropped automatically. Okay, see what I did here? So once I change these numbers here, the mortgage amount changes. Uh, the only thing doesn't change here, I still gotta take this number, pluck it here and bring it back, and I will automate this for you, but not right now. 1784, 1784, 1784. So now I'm making some money. Now, if uh, I really get 56 cents a foot here, and I really get uh, just slightly less than, okay, now I'm getting real money. Now, uh, I think I'm gonna get monthly income, so that's what I need to break even. But had I make a monthly income of 3,000, which I think I could, um, my profit or loss per month would be 3,000 as my costs, 442 a month. Okay, that's my cash flow. And the annual would be uh, this number 12 times this. So I'm making uh, 5,300 a month, 5,300 a year here. And then my ROI, if you really want to know, take this number and divide by your investment. Now that does not include, uh, that's a high investment, don't forget. So the ROI will be low. Okay, looking at about 3%, something like that, 2.61%. But you know, most real estate uh, averages in a 3 to 4%, globally speaking, like in the world, it's considered very safe, that's why the but we, I'll show you another video how to bring this ROI to 5, 6, and 8, and 10%. Uh, but that is when the ROI is low. Now, in order to increase your ROI, of course, you need to reduce your deposit. Uh, so if the deposit is 20%, and we go back to the 116, and my mortgage is, uh, again, I'm paying 464 because I didn't put a large deposit, so I'm back to the 2200 a month. Okay, so I'm reversing here. So... I'm breaking even, okay? My ROI is close to zero because I'm breaking even. Uh, nonetheless, the most important thing to understand here, I think, is that we can come to, I'm just gonna put this away so we're not, uh, you know, annoyed by this, but we can, the, there is an equilibrium here and that's what we wanna find about the breaking even point. And the break even point is uh, 464, the mortgage is 2200, Okay, and here, that's better. Okay, so there you go. So that that that's about that's about it. In order to break even, you know, uh, get three thousand dollars, you can pay about five eighty. So these are the takeaways. This is the summary. Okay, so we pay five eighty dollars. Deposit is uh, one sixteen. Uh, now, closing cost, cash, not included in my calculation um, monthly expense is about three thousand and I need monthly rent of about three thousand a month so in this case I break even and I, I enjoy the appreciation and of course uh, part of the mortgage payment that I pay about half of it a little more or less goes towards my asset because that's that's capital so in the next video I'll show you how to calculate these but for now um, I think the Nordic Condos is a good investment. I think they has amazing potential. Um, the Platinum sale is on right now, so you can buy these things right now. Uh, you can get a worksheet from me and everything you need right now. Um, it will be more. Next week, we're going to start with, uh, with the uh, event. So first, the VIP and the Platinum Brokers. Then you're going to get inundated with emails about Nordic, if you haven't so far. And then, you know, the sell a bunch of units, raise the price a little bit, sell a bunch of units, raise the price a little bit, sell a bunch, raise the price a little bit until it goes to uh, public where the price are the highest. Okay, doesn't mean you shouldn't buy then if you couldn't before, that, that happens too, that's totally fine. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna grab the best possible unit at the lowest possible price. Uh, if, it, if it's my thing, I like uh, a bit of you, so I know I'll pay a little bit more for it today but I think in the long term, when I sell it and I'll get more for it, when I rent it, I get a little bit more for it, but I'll probably get a stable tenant. I mean, why would you leave 
if you have such a good place close to your close to work um, right by the TTC that's where you want to be beautiful unit amazing building lots of amenities so there you go uh, any questions hit me up I hope that was uh, useful this is Yossi that's it